Greetings and thank you for tuning in to My Journey with Paula G. We'd like to thank our underwriters, the Good Actors Studio of Marietta, Georgia, my coffee shop at East Lake, Pastor Time International Bible College, Augusta, Georgia, with Dr. Paul and Marcia Kelly, Creekside Dental Incorporated of Douglasville, Georgia, Lucy Designs with Brandon Sampson of Maryland, Survival Radio Network and Clicks Photography by Clark Garrison, and Positive Power Double XI Christian Media and Radio Network with Journey Wars Live Worldwide. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and tune in again. Embrace the journey. Thank you to our underwriter for My Journey with Paula G., author Dr. Byron D. Herndon. Dr. Herndon's book, Heart Condition, is a touching story. It's about a young boy born with a tiny hole in the center of his heart. And despite this hole, he never felt like love was lost from within. Now this condition, one may say, caused him to live in fear. But he grew closer to God through this tiny, stubborn hole that refused to develop at his birth. And despite this tiny hole, his parents and siblings showered him with love. Heart Condition, a story about growing with God. Heart Condition is now available. Visit www.heartcondition.org. Baby. Yo, good brother. It's your boy, man. Tight as showers, man. You in town? I heard you was in New Orleans chilling, man. Yeah, man. I'm in your city. Cool, man. man. But look, come swing by the studio with me, man. I got this great record. I want you to feature yeah. on with me, man. Meet me up um, 2 30, 2 o'clock or so. You know, we'll chop it up. I'll see you there. Give me the address. I'm going to shoot you the address through the text. All right. I'll be in a little bit. All right, cool. Cool, man. Yeah. It's gonna be alright. I know it's gonna be alright. Listen if you will. Yeah. It's working for me. Mm-hmm. It's hey, it's gonna be alright. Say it again. It's for Gotta do what I could, even though I ain't. for amazing grace you kept on covering me in the midst of all my own you stay right by my side your love was my guide gotta do what I could even though I ain't what I should but you may not listen I don't do what I used to do Brand new. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He changed all my wrongs and gave me a brand new song. That's why I depend on you. Cause I know you can see me through. Uh, you never left me lonely. I know, I know, I know. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, I gotta do what I can. No, I ain't what I should. Welcome to My Journey with Paula G, where we juggle this journey called life while walking in the gifts and talents that God has given us. We are so glad that you have joined us for yet another episode, and we are coming to you with this episode from Atlanta, Georgia. We are in front of a live studio audience, and we thank each and every person present for sharing the journey with us and being with us. 
Now you all know each week I start with a word of inspiration from an individual who has been on the journey with us and we have a word of wisdom from Zamira Jones and she is actually um, a young lady who admires a woman that we speak of often here on my journey that is Mother Hines. Zamira Jones says from John 8 32 you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That truth is a freedom, freedom setter. It will indeed set you free. Well, today I'm excited to have this young lady with me. She is an author. She's a podcaster. She is uh, the owner of TC Praise and uh, she deals with insurance during the day. That's her day job. But she's here with us to share her journey. She is Tamala Coleman. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And you look absolutely wonderful today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely wonderful. So share with us a bit of your journey and describe your relationship with God. Wow. I guess you could say I'm an overcomer. And I started with humble beginnings. Yes. We all have a story. Yes. God has a plan for all of us. Yes. And he has a purpose for all of us. Yes. So I would say um, overcoming bullying, mm -hmm. overcoming believing in myself and finding myself is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And just knowing who I am in Christ. Yes. Um, I was born in Germany. My father was in the military. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And um, of course, I was born, born uh, with a cleft lip. Mm -hmm. Um, some kids are born with cleft lips, some are born with cleft palates. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, I, when being blessed, I only had one surgery, but it was on the army base. Yeah. And um, my, my, my mother gave birth to me, and they got the news from the doctor mm -hmm. that they needed to send me to another hospital. Mm -hmm. It was like 14 hours away yeah. from where they were. Then they had to leave me. You know, you have the firstborn child, I'm the firstborn, their firstborn, and having to take me to a place that they don't know where they're leaving me. It's snowing, yeah. and this time I'm newborn, and I don't have one country. foreign country, mm -hmm. and first of all, my mother had never been there. <laughs> and so oh, it was pretty much scary for her to have yeah. her firstborn child. Yeah. And anyway, um, my father came out of the military, and we moved back to Atlanta, where I grew up and went to school. So my journey began there. And that's when I started to kind of like not love myself. Mm -hmm. I did not think I was, feel I was beautiful. Um, I was bullied in school from elementary to high school. And you can imagine the things that I went through. Um, there's actually one incident that I actually can recall that sticks to my mind. Um, I was in elementary and going to the bus stop and a couple of girls, I was always picked on and mm -hmm. you know, I had long hair and mm -hmm. you know, the boys liked me, but the girls didn't like me. Yeah. So it's a couple of girls just came up behind me and they just pushed me. Mm -hmm. And I slid forward on concrete mm -hmm. um, on my left face and my eye. And my parents had to come to the school and, and pick me up and all this. And so I went home that night and I remember asking my mom, she was just trying to get my, you know, put the oil and ointment on my mm -hmm. eye and everything. And I asked her, I said, Mom, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. She says, nothing's wrong with you. And so I, that has always stuck with me. Mm -hmm. So then, you thought with everything, the way everyone was treating you, yes, you thought there's got to be something, something wrong. Something's wrong with me. Yeah. So basically, fast forward, I went to high school mm -hmm. and the same thing. It was just always something. I was always fighting. Yeah. I was always having to fight. You know, I felt like color purple. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's always like fight. always having to fight. Yeah. And yeah. so anyway, I would be in, you know, I would get suspended yeah. because I would fight back. But then, I, you know, they would always allow me back in school. Yeah. My parents were like, no, you know, she didn't start this fight. Yeah. So anyway, fast forward, I um, graduated high school. During all that, even my childhood, mm -hmm. I had good childhood because mm -hmm. my parents, you know, spoiled me. I was yeah. the first, you know, firstborn first child. So they poured so into, they poured into me, family. yes. And I grew up yeah. in a household with both my parents, yeah. now um, married over 50 years. Mm -hmm. And so I saw marriage, you know, the good life of the marriage and, mm -hmm. and growing up in that. Mm -hmm. But then I, I got married for my first time and I actually ended up in a marriage that was not good for me. Um, I was in my 20s mm -hmm. and it was my high school sweetheart so I was kind of like okay you know because he was familiar I you know 
and so just fast forward I he ended up being an alcoholic mm -hmm. so I had to deal with that I'm dealing with alcoholic not able he wasn't able to keep down a job mm -hmm. he was always ill or sick or something and I was having to carry on and do everything I mean I had to be the the wife and the husband I was the mother and the father and so basically so looking let me ask you this looking back do you do you can you see now maybe some things that maybe didn't I do what are some of the things that you I, I, there were a lot, lot of warning signs mm -hmm. even before I got married I, I remember um, you know sometimes when he would um, you know, drink, but it wasn't like where I knew he was a heavy drinker. It was like sociably, mm -hmm. and so I think it kind of led to that mm -hmm. over time. And then I and I didn't drink, right. and I was raised in the church, you know, and I had I had a relation. I had actually was religion with God, but I didn't have that yeah, relationship. relationship. Yeah, that's so it God had to kind of take me to three sixty. Because even be, when I told my parents I was we were going to get married, it was a big argument. I mean, it was just mm -hmm. a big uproar. My mom, I remember sitting at the first pew at my wedding, and she cried like she was at a funeral. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her, and I could have bailed out then, but I kept going. Mm -hmm. I just I married him anyway, and I so think that happens a lot. Yes, I think that happens. Yes. People get to the altar the wedding day, yes. and sometimes even both parties know. Yes. You know, we, we, this is not a good idea, but you spent the yes. money, you got the church, yes. the reception, yes. the, you know, grandma, grandpa, uncle yes. Jojo, everybody's coming. Yes. And it's like, you yes. know, we're just going to do it anyway. Do it anyway. And, and that's what happened. Them, yeah. And that's what happened. And I felt it was always an inkling in me. Mm -hmm. The Lord was kind of like, you know, this small voice telling you, yes. you don't need to do this. Mm -hmm. It's not time. You need to wait. Mm -hmm. But then I, I actually went through it and I had to suffer. Mm -hmm. I suffered so much that I was depressed. Mm -hmm. uh, my hair started falling out. Mm -hmm. I started losing a lot of weight. And then here comes the children. Mm -hmm. So I had a son and then I had a daughter. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that brought them into that. So I remember um, sitting in a corner one day at home and I remember praying out to the Lord. Mm -hmm and just pouring out myself to him and saying, Lord, if you get me out of this, mm -hmm. I will do whatever you want me to do. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, people say that uh, God is an on-time God. Mm -hmm. He is an on-time God <laughs> because he actually showed out for me within like three days. Mm -hmm. And he opened up an opportunity for me to get out of that marriage. And with that, I took that. <laughs> I took the took opportunity. The but it was not in my mind to get married and get divorced. That was not the intention right. because yes. I've seen my parents married. I've had family relatives married for years, mm -hmm. decades. And, you know, I went through something because of my own choices. Yes. So I got made away for me to get out of that situation. And I remember um, when it happened. Mm -hmm. He said, this is it, so you need to take it. Take this, take this leap. Take it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to take a break, and when we come back on the flip side of the break, I want you to talk to us a little bit about TC Praise yes, and how that has come about yes, and um, how your life has shifted today and where Tamala is today from the journey that she has come from, where she is today, and what it is that you feel God has placed inside of you to share with others on this journey. And, you know, as I've mentioned to you all, you know, we all have a journey on this life and we all have something that God has placed inside of each and every one of us. And we have to have the boldness to allow that gift, allow that talent, allow that skill to come out so that we can share it with others and do what it is that God has called us to do. We are going to take a break and when we come back from the break, we're going to continue this conversation. We thank you all so much for joining us here each and every episode of My Journey with Paula G where we juggle this journey called life while walking in the gifts and talents that God has given each and every one of us. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
When I was 10, I got down on my knees to pray. Lord, if you have a girl, then send her on my way. All I want to do with my life is love my wife. All I want to do with my wife is treat her like Christ. Searching for living waters, marriage is not an auction. Learning it from my father, spirited of adoption. Mixing it all together, oxygen, no concoctions. That's why loving you right's the only option, yeah. I just got to give him praise. I just got to give him praise. I just got to give him praise. I just got to give God praise. Giving them all fight, I'm leaving them all flight. I'm building these characteristics of all night. I'm playing my cards right, conducting myself like been waiting my whole life for the girl I haven't met yet. It feels like I've been waiting so long for you. So long. I long for you. Welcome back to my journey with Paula G, where we juggle this journey called life while walking in the gifts and talents that God has given each and every one of us. We are here with my guest, Miss Tamala Coleman, and she was sharing before the break a bit um, about her journey and her upbringing. You know, we, we, we've heard these, um, you know, scenarios before, we've heard these stories before, but just how much of an impact your, your childhood is, you know, the, your foundation the words that are spoken into you as a, as a young child and how those things manifest into our lives and how, uh, you know, during the course of our lives, how things just happen. You know, we have these circumstances and we have these situations that occur that we have to deal with in life. So Tamala was sharing that with us before the break, but now she's with us yes, and ma she is on her journey. As we mentioned before, you're a podcaster. Tell us a bit about your podcast. Wow, that's a story. <laughs> we all have a story. Yeah. So about maybe three years ago, mm -hmm. I'm always trying to reinvent myself. Yeah. So I was just sitting there one night and I was telling my husband, I think I want to, you know, do a radio show or something, you know, just out of the blue. It's yeah. like, I want to do that, you know, because the intention was to reach the masses. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea exactly how it was going to be formatted or anything like right. that. But I actually wrote the name of it. God gave me the name of it. Mm -hmm. And it was called Spiritually Speaking with Tamara Coleman. So I always kept a journal or uh, something near the bed and I would just write in it. So I just wrote the name of it in the, in the journal and just shut it, put it up, then look at it for two years later. Wow. 
two years later, I look at that book. I said, wow, spiritually speaking, but it wasn't in my time. It was God's timing. Mm -hmm. So he said, then this is it. Yeah. So I actually um, was in touch with a young lady mm -hmm. that actually was in a magazine that I was also in for writers, Writers Life magazine. And she contacted me. We just, I don't know. It's just like it was just divine yeah. purpose for us to meet. Mm -hmm. And so she told me about the radio show. And so I decided to give them a call. Right. And she's, they're like, okay, well, do you have a format? What is the name of it? You know, do you want to do a tester or whatever before you go, you know, live? Mm -hmm. It's a recorded podcast and it airs every Thursday. And it's reaching over 78,000 people. Uh, basically, it is about testimonies and deliverance stories. Mm -hmm. I've spoken with many people that have um, went through domestic violence as well mm -hmm. as cancer survivors, atheists mm -hmm. that came to Christ. I talk to so many people that many times I'm in tears mm -hmm. um, during the podcast. And so it's reaching so many people because people have the same stories, you yes. know, they, they yeah. can, they're familiar with them. So basically that's how that started. So I've been in the podcast with Spiritual Speaking for about two years now, about two years now. I think it's so, you know, it's so encouraging because we hear a lot of these stories over and over, you know, um, domestic violence survivors, yes. cancer survivors, yes. uh, young men and young women who had difficult childhoods mm -hmm. and how they struggled yes. and maybe didn't make such wise choices, yes. but somewhere in the process, mm -hmm. God touched them one way or another, yes. Yes. whether it was through the voice of someone else, whether it was through a circumstance, God, if you get me out of this circumstance, yes. I promise, yes. <laughs> yes. you know, one way or another, their life is touched. Yes. He gets their attention, and then they're able to turn their life around and then begin the journey of using that experience, yes. you know, on a platform to you know, to help others, yes. you know, as you have done. And that is what it is. And I ask God, you know, even though, you know, we don't know his plan. We know he has a plan. Yeah. But we know that the plans are not to harm us, but to give us a hope in the future. Yeah. And because of that, we have to realize that if you are and you have faith and you believe and you trust God, then whatever you have and God has given you and created you to be yeah. and the purpose he has for you, mm -hmm. nothing is beyond because God is a, he is a big God, yes. you know, he can do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can ask or think. So because of that, yeah. I say, like, God, whatever you want me to do, yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. And when I talk to these different people, this is nationwide, and when I speak to them, it's like, wow. And I think I have a story. Yeah. You listen to somebody else's that, story. Isn't that something yes. how you, you talk to others and in the midst yes. of talking to them, like you said, yes. you know, you, you feel that you have a story, a story and indeed yes. you do. Yes. But then you hear some others, yes. and it's like, my God, yes. how, how are you standing in front of me? Exactly. You know, how exactly. are you able to, to even speak? Yes. You know, yes. so it, 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 you know, it really, again, speaks to what you were saying about, you know, um, you know God will do in and through yes. us exceedingly and abundantly, yes. but it does take the work. It takes the work. It's not an easy journey it's sometimes not. of, of it's not. You know, through that point. So tell us a bit about TC Praise. Wow, that's <laughs> another story. <laughs> TC Praise began actually, I went to actual stage play mm -hmm. um, and my sister was in, she's an actress. And I was sitting there with my husband and my brother in law, and I was sitting in my first stage play, and I'm sitting there like just amazed at the cast and you know, just everything. And I sat there and I was like talking to myself, and it's one thing I always do, I speak affirmations, and whatever I say that come out of my mouth. Yeah. It just power. comes, manifestation yeah. comes. So it's like, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lord and behold, the next week, I start on a title for it, which was Lord Changed My Heart. Mm -hmm. And I was finished writing a script for it, my first stage play in 30 days. In 30 days. Mm -hmm. And so I contact another young lady who had another production. Mm -hmm. And she actually, um, I actually co-directed mm -hmm. Um, Rain wrote it and I actually wrote it on, uh, under her production and then after that production was a success I decided I can do this right. I'm gonna start my own production yeah, yeah. so I Speaking named it, it T that's right <laughs> and I started and I, I named it TC Price Productions LLC and my next play was under my production and I do faith-based types of stage plays with a message mm -hmm. um, forgiveness 
um, just letting people know how good God is. And when they leave there, you know, we have prayer before and we have pray af prayer afterwards. And they leave there changed. Yeah. Um, I actually, the last one I did was he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I found out later that someone in, in the audience, because they have been shacking up, uh -huh. they end up getting married. Yeah, married. <laughs> <laughs> they quite convicted. They convicted them. So they end up getting married. And so, and I was, you know, it was nothing of me. That was God. It was mm -hmm. nothing of me. But God gets all the glory. Mm -hmm. He gets all the glory. So anything that I do is, is for him. Do you have any future projects or ideas that you, you're visualizing on the horizon that you are beginning to work on and you'd yes. like to see unfold? Yes. I'm actually working on a um, one now called Churchy Folks. Um, it's funny, hilarious, but it also tells a story about how we go to church as religion, yes. but not with a relationship with God. And so there are different pieces in there that actually just bring out different characters of people that overlook those that need to be saved, mm -hmm. uh, overlook those that don't have. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we have to look out for those that come into our churches, mm -hmm. you know, just watch and, and, you know, just have compassion for them and love on them when they come into the house of the Lord, because we are supposed to be that light. So basically, churchy folks <laughs> and um, cap collaboration books with that I do as well as my own collaboration books. Yeah, and share with the audience how they can stay connected. Your website, social media. Yes, ma'am. You can reach me on all the social media, most of them. Anyway, um, Facebook, Tamla Coleman. Instagram, I am Tamla Coleman. Twitter, Tamla Coleman, and also Tamla Coleman Books at yolasite.com. So, so your your website. And your social media. Yes. You share with us your website and your social media. Yes, social yes. media mm -hmm. is um, Facebook, mm -hmm. Tamala Coleman. And website? And website, Tamala uh -huh. Coleman Books at Yola Site. All right. And you heard it right here, Tamala Coleman has <coughs> been with us today. And we thank her so much for joining us on the journey. And we thank you for joining us on the journey as well. And as I always share with you all and encourage you all, remember that the greatest conversation you will ever have is the one that takes place in between your ears. What are you speaking to yourself? What is your I am? Is God a part of that conversation? And are you listening to his still, small voice? Until next time, embrace the journey. Greetings and thank you for tuning in to My Journey with Paula G. We'd like to thank our underwriters, the Good Actor Studio of Marietta, Georgia, my coffee shop at East Lake, Pastor Time International Bible College, Augusta, Georgia, with Dr. Paul and Marcia Kelly, Creekside Dental Incorporated of Douglasville, Georgia, Lucy Designs with Brandon Sampson of Maryland, Survival Radio Network and Clicks Photography by Clark Garrison, and Positive Power Double XI Christian Media and Radio Network with Journey Was Live Worldwide. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and tune in again. Embrace the journey.